Again, welcome to Java Programming One. In this lecture, we're going to discuss about Java arrays, the basic concept of array. And this will be our last topic for Java Programming One. So our main objective here is to go through what is an array, the definition, and the whole general concept of it. And also we're going to explore how to declare an array and also how to manipulate the data in an array. Also understand the concept of array index out of bound. And we're also going to be familiar with the restriction on array processing. So we have open program here. Our program is, they say we should read 100 numbers, then we compute their average and then find out how many numbers are above the average. Well, if we want to solve this problem, at this very stage without the concept of array. It means we have to declare 100 variables. And then we have to store 100 numbers in the 100 variables. Then we can find the average. And then we can use the selection statement if or if else. Uh, we use to find the, based on the condition here, we want all the numbers that are above the average. I mean, uh, uh, numbers above the average using the selection statement. But now our main problem is that we don't want to declare 100 variables to store 100 numbers. So imagine if we have 200 variables uh, or 200 values or even 1,000 values, which means we have to have 1,000 variables. So uh, I mean, that's too much to take time. So this is where, again, the concept of array comes in. So the whole idea of an array is that we're going to declare uh, one array, give it a name, and also give it a data type, same as the carrier variable. The variable must have a name and also the type of data we are going to store, the data type. And then we will set the array size to any number of, uh, here if it's 100 numbers, then we set the size to 100. So this means we are declaring only one variable, but the, the variable type is array. So array is a data structure that make it possible for us to store more than one value, so organize more than one values in one array. One point here is that all the values have to be the same data type because we are declaring one array. So if the array data type is int, we always put again int values or integer values in the array. And again, we will go through the definition and et cetera. So our problem here is that we, we don't want to declare 100 variables, then compute the average of the 100 uh, values in the variables. We want to declare only one variable, but we can store up to 100 values in, which means we have to use an array. So this is an example of an array. Uh, first, the definition is, array is a data structure. Actually, that's the most simple data structure. The concept of data structure is how data is organized and also uh, manipulate based on some operations that we can perform on the data. So array is a data structure that represents a collection of the same types of data. So the keyword here is same type of data. We can store any amount of values into an array or it can be characters and strings into an array but they all have to be the same data type. So how do we declare an array? We yeah, we have array name, my list. Now we use a square bracket, open and close, then the data type. So here, our data type is double, which means we can only store decimal numbers in an array name, my list. And the size of this array is 10. So we have a size here, 10. So this is again the sentence for declaration of array. We start with the, the data type of the array, open and close square bracket. The name of the array is my list. Then we use the new keyword to dynamically allocate a memory space for the array my list. And the size of the space we need is 10. So this is what we get. Now, when we have an array, we have something called the index. 
always the index is the position of the values. So here we have a, a rename my list. The index will start from zero. Since the size is 10, that means I'll, the index will be from zero to nine. Now if the size is 20, then it will be from zero to 19. So here you can see that we have array, my list, all of them are my list 10. The index is from zero to one. So zero will be the first value in the array. One will be the second value, two will be the third value, etc. Then the nine will be the tenth or the last value. Now here we just assign values to it. We will go through the process of again assigning values to uh, an array. So here we have the values here. So again, array is a data structure that represents a collection of the same types of data, which means the array can only take the same data type of items. It can be strings, characters, values, decimal numbers, and whole numbers. So example given here, we have a array name my list. We declare it as double. Always the syntax for declaring an array, we have to have the open and close parentheses. Sometimes we can put the open and close parentheses also in the front of the name of the array. But most by convention, we always put it uh, before the name, but we can put it in the front also. So we saw how to declare an array. The syntax again is the data type. Here we saw the double, open and close parentheses, then the name of the array, which is the array ref variable, which means reference variable, array reference variable. So here we have double open and close parentheses, my list. Now, you can see that in the previous slide, we declare the array and also we gave the size of it, initialize it with the size. Now, if I create this array with, with no value, it will give me 0, 0.0 or zero from, in the zero to nine, all the values will be zero. So we can write everything in one line. The type, double, open and close, square bracket. The array name is my list, equal to new. The data type again, double, the size is 10. Oh, here we saw the sentence, we can separate it. So first, what we did, we declared the array first. So this is just a declaration. We don't have the memory yet. When we use the keyword new, with the data type, and then the square bracket, we, we initialize uh, the size of the array. The new keyword, we allocate the memory space for us. So this is another style we said. Now, here we said data type, as I said earlier, we have the open and close square bracket before the name of the array. We can also have the, the name of the array then the open and close square bracket. So either one will work. So here we have my list, open and close square bracket, or open and close square bracket, then my list. So this is the first step. Just This is again declaring an array variables. We didn't initialize it. We didn't give the size of it, nothing yet. Not yet. So now we are going to create the array. So creating the array, now we use the new keyword which we dynamically allocate a memory space then with the data type and also the array size always we have to have the array size if we are using the new keyword so that's the second line we already declared the array type is double the name is my list now second step i'll say my list equal to new double here we say the size is 10. So we can write this as two lines or we write everything as one line, whereby here I may write uh, the type is double, my list open and close square bracket equal to new double 10, everything one line or two steps. So now we can manipulate the values in our array. So when I said my list open and close square bracket with zero, it means some references to the first value in the array. Here the size is 10. 
So the last value is nine. So referencing the last element in the array. Also references the first element in the array. So declaring and creating in one step. So this is what we said previously, and that was the first example we saw. So instead of the two step, we have the data type, open and close square bracket, array ref, so this will be the array name, that's array reference variable, equal to new, then data type, then the array size. So everything one step. Then here we have the double, Again, square bracket, open and close. Array name my list equal to new double 10. So everything one line. So sometimes we also know the length of an array. So the length of an array, once an array is created, its size is always fixed. So normally we say array is uh, static. Static means we cannot change the size. So when we get deep into data structure class, we may discuss it by something like a stack or queue. We can implement it using a linked list which dynamically allocates and the memory. And this again means the size doesn't matter. During the running time, uh, we create the node. And then now if we use the, an array implementation, if the size of the stack is 50, then it's 50, we can change it. So array, once it's created, its size is fixed, cannot be changed. Now also we can find the size using the keyword length. So length is like a constant variable. So for example, I have an array name, uh, my list. So when I say my list dot length, whatever the size of the array is, it will give it to me. So here to return 10, since the size of the, my list is 10, it to return 10. So the keyword length return the size of the array. And normally you have always have to use the name of the array first, dot the keyword length. So we also have a default values in an array. As we mentioned earlier, when we create an array using the new, keyword, all the values, if it's int or double, all the values will be zero or 0, 0.0. Now, if it's a chart type, also is zeros. And if it's Boolean, by default, everything is false. So by default values, if you have int or double or char, zeros, and then if it's Boolean, then it's false. So we have to set it to true. So index variables, as we said earlier, always start from zero to one less than the length. So here we say that, here we say that the array elements are accessed through the index. The array indexes are zero base. That is, it starts from zero to array reference value dot length minus one. The length will give you the size. So if the size of the array is 10, uh, my list dot length will give me 10, but the index should be from zero to nine. So that's why we say zero to array reference variable dot length minus one. So again, if the size is 10, then we get zero, the index will be zero to nine. We always can represent the individual values in an array using their index because the index is their position. So I can have the array name, then the index, and we will see an example soon. So this is example here. For example, if I say my list two, it means the third value. First value is zero, second value, first value is zero, second value is one, the third value is two. So if I have values, let's say uh, we declare an array, we use the default value zero throughout. I can now come and say my list to equal to 100, which means the third value in the array is 100. We can also use an expression to, to assign values to an array. So here, for example, we are saying that the first value in the array 
plus the second value in the array. The index are zero and one, first and second. We had the two values, then we assign it to what? The third value in the array. So we can use any formula, any expression, right? arithmetic expression to assign value to an array. There's another way we can declare an array whereby we don't have to specify the size. And we also don't need to use the new keyword, but we have to initialize the value. So here we have declaring, creating, initialize in one step. So we don't need to use the keyword. We start with the data type of the values in the array, which is double, open and close square bracket. The array name is my list. Then we, we start with the carry brace, 1.9, 2.9, 3.4, 3.5, we cross it. So this means we are going to have an array name my list and the size will be four. So the index will be from zero to three. Zero is 1.9, one is two, and the index one is 2.9, the index two is 3.4, the index three is 3.5. And this is a very shorthand synthesis that we can use in one statement, both assigning the value, declaring the array, everything. So here, again, double, our array is my list. We assign the four values, as we mentioned in the previous slide. Again, the index is from zero to three because it's four values. Now we can change the values using assignment operator. Or here we may decide that, okay, we create an array. This time, instead of using short and as we did here, here we are using the long process or the normal process. So we declare an array name, my list again, data type double, the size is four, because we have four values. So we can now use assignment operators to assign each value. Uh, zero is 1.9, one is 2.9, two is 3.4, so either of these two step, uh, two methods will work, but I would prefer to use the first method. If I only know that I'm declaring a variable and assigning only four values to it, I don't want to use the assignment operator four times. So this is more short and again, just everything one step. Now the caution here, they say we should be very, very careful is that when using the shorthand notation, again, as we mentioned earlier, you have to declare, create, and most important, you have to initialize the array all in one statement. So when you split it, you get a syntax error. So this is an example. If I declare the array first, let's say double, open and close square bracket my list. This is correct. You declare the array, but you can't use the shorthand no more. This means I have to use the new. So I have to say uh, my list new double the size is four. So if we do it, these two steps, we get a syntax error. Everything have to be on one line. Now let's see our example here uh, to trace a program with an array. So we already covered the loops. So you can see here that we have a for loop. Let's start with the program. So we have a main class here, the name is test. So our, our file name will be test.java. Uh, we have the main method. And now we declare an array. The name of the array is values. The data type is int. The size is five. So this will give us declaration also initialize uh, our. So if we don't have any value, actually we can see it right here. It means all the four items, uh, five items from zero to four. Again, the size is five, so the index is zero to four. All the items will be zeros. That's the statement here we give us. Now we are using a for loop now. Uh, again, using for loop is very good because we don't have to repeat the code over again. So we normally use a for loop to assign values to an array. And actually, we also use for loop to print out values in an array or even to process values in an array. So it's very good. So here you can see that we are using a for loop. And we are starting from one, which means we are skipping our first index, which is zero. 
So the I here, you can see that in the program here, we have values, the index is I. So the counter I, well, I'll say the counter variable I, represent the index of the array. So we start from one, and we, should, we said it should be less than five, because we know the size is five, so it should go up to four. We increment one at a time. So the first thing we do, we are going to assign the values. Again, the value is the name of the array. The first index is one. So we are going to assign a value to the index number one. And the value will be one plus zero because i is one plus value i minus one. i minus one means again, i is one. So one minus one is zero. So this means I will get one plus zero. So after this process, the value in index one will be one. Again, one more time. We are starting, again, this is a main method. First, we declare our variable and we initialize it to zeros, the size is five. But we are using a for loop now to assign values to the individual elements in the array. So instead of starting from zero, we decided to start from one, which means the index zero will remain zero. Uh, we have a condition again. We know for loop take three statement. The first will be the uh, the counter, the initializing starting point. Then we have our condition. The condition here said I should be less than five. Yes, because the size is four, so zero to four. So then we increment one at a time. So we can see we have a values, but the index here is i, which means i is one. When I run this program, the first value i will be one. So what will be the index one? It will be i, which is one plus i minus one. So i again is one, so one minus one is zero. So this means I'm adding the value one plus uh, the array index zero. And array index zero value is what? Zero. Because one minus one is zero, so index zero is zero. So this means, again, our first index, uh, uh, second index, which is one, the value will be one. Now we're still inside the for loop. We can't come out yet. So we increment to two. So i is two now. And we say that it's two less than five years. So if two is less than five, then index two will be what? i plus value. Again, this time remember i is what? A one. So we, uh, I'm sorry, previously i was one. Now i is two because this is two increment two. I is two plus what? Two minus one, which is one. So values one will be one. We have in this one previously it was one. So we get two minus one is one and the value is one. Uh, so that will be three. Again, I have the slides that we can go through step by step. So let's start beginning again. Initialize our array, the size is five, so all the values are zero. So the next step is i becomes one. When i becomes one, we are going to check the condition. Is one less than five? Yes. Is one less than five? Yes. So if one is less than five, then we can do this execution. So after this line is executed, value one is one. Why? Because i is one and i one plus one minus one is zero in the zero is zero so one then we go to the next step again we increment i becomes two after i plus plus i becomes two is two less than five yes two is less than five okay if two is less than five then we have a value two in this two will be two plus two minus one the index will be two minus one here so two minus one will give me one. So that means in this one, value in this one, the value is one. So this means we get three, two plus three. Now we increment again to three now. And it's three less than five. Yes, if three is less than five, then we are in this three now, which will be three plus three minus one, which is two. So the two was three. So that will give us six to be three plus three. 
because two, three minus one is two. The index two, the value is three. So that will give us three plus three. So let's see, and that give us six. So you can see here three plus three. So then we increment by one again. So this time we get four now. Is four less than five? Yes, okay, four is less than five, then we are going to index four. And then I is four plus, four minus one is three, so I'll go to the value in the three, in the three is six, six plus four is 10. So which means in this four last value will be 10. Here again, we are checking if four is less than five, which is true, then it's 10. So we get four plus six, and that will give us 10. So this again, the whole concept of a array. Now we increment by one, so we go to five. Is five less than five? No. So if five is not less than five, now we come out of the loop. But when we came out of the loop, we have one more statement here. The index for the zero, the first index, they say to be index one plus index four. Index one is one, index four is 10. So it will be 10 plus one, which is 11. So we'll see that we exit then one plus 10 is 11. So in the zero, we give us 11. Again, this will be the conclusion of our first part of array. Uh, in our next lectures, we're going to discuss the second part of array. How do we print an item from array? And how do we assign values to an array? And basically how to use an, an array in our program. So again, wish everybody the best. Thank you for your time.